Hey guys, it's Jared here from OzPitMasters and HowLowCanYouSlow.com. Welcome to video number two of the three video series on how to create pancetta at home with Umai Dry Artisan Meat Kits. This video is going to take us through the aging process. So this pancetta has been in the fridge for seven days. You can see just how different the meat is. It's really brought in a lot of that deep kind of red color. You can see how much the actual rub has really incorporated into the meat and because we've been flipping that every day or so we know that that flavor and that cure has really gone through the whole pork belly itself now once we've taken it out of the fridge after that seven days we're going to go ahead and wash it off as much as possible because we don't want it to be part of the next part of our process all of those flavors have already imparted into the meat and that's why we have such amazing color here and now what we're going to do is go ahead and turn it into the pancetta that we're looking for. One of the things that makes pancetta quite a lot different than bacon is that pancetta isn't cooked or smoked at all like bacon is. All of the flavor that comes from pancetta is part of that curing process. And almost always you're going to eat pancetta cooked. You can cube it up and add it in much the same way that you'd use it for bacon or cut it into slices like you would with bacon. But it has a really rich, really different kind of a flavor that isn't really present in bacon in the same way, which is why I really like it so much. So we're going to take this nice piece of pork belly here, and the first thing we're going to do is trim it up so that it's nice and even, so that when we roll it shortly, it's going to make it much, much easier. So all I've done is I've cut it so that our pork belly is nice and straight, nice and rectangular shaped, and you could use these offcuts if you'd want but I found that a lot of the offcuts that I made were mostly just fat because it's right along the edge so I wasn't that worried because I just probably wouldn't use it anyway so now that we've got this nice rectangular piece of meat we're gonna go ahead and start rolling it now this is probably the most difficult process of this whole cook because you really want to make sure that the roll is really tight you want to make sure that you're not leaving any gaps in there so i found that by rolling it and really pressing down with my weight onto the meat helped that a lot you want to make sure that you're not sort of squeezing it at the edges by pushing too hard on it but you do want it to be nice and tight as part of making sure that our pork belly is going to be tight we're going to want to make sure that we're tying some really good butcher's knots along the meat with some butcher's twine at sort of one inch intervals to make sure it is really nice and tight now there are so many different kinds of butcher's knots that you can use i've experimented a lot and you can see that there's some lines on my actual pork belly today showing some of the experiments that i've done but i found that this particular knot was the one that was easiest for me and got me the tightest roll so you start off by flipping it over the pork belly till you've got two ends you take the end that's on the top flip it underneath the other string and then over the top of your thumb to create a little loop you bring that loop around underneath both strings and then drop it down through the hole and that's going to bring you a nice little slip knot there tighten it up into the pork belly and then bring it down for a couple of tugs and you'll find that you've got a really nice tight butcher's knot there it's a fantastic knot to use. I use it across the whole pork belly today. It takes a little bit of practice, but once you have it down, it is a really nice, easy and tight knot to keep your meat together. Give it some practice, but it really does help and it really does work. We're gonna do these knots about every inch to inch and a half along the pork belly. And then once that's finished, I'm just gonna trim off the excess string just to sort of make it look a little bit better and kind of keep it out of the way. But what we should have at the end is a nice tightly rolled pancetta. We shouldn't have any gaps in the meat inside of it and it should be pretty even the whole way down. Now that we're ready to go, I'm going to go ahead and talk a little bit about these amazing charcuterie artisanal dry aging bags from Umai Dry. These Umai Dry artisan meat bags are really fantastic for creating amazing charcuterie at home. The thing about them that works so well is they have this one-way air transfer from the bag, which essentially means that moisture can leave the bag, but bacteria can't enter the bag while it's curing and aging in your fridge. 
And what this is gonna mean for you is that you can do this at home without creating one of those really expensive dry aging boxes or having a dedicated fridge or any of those sort of really expensive products that you need. This bag and all of the products from Umai Dry are gonna allow you to create really quality products at home without that huge price tag that usually comes from products like this. Now this particular Umai Dry bag is used for charcuterie. It comes with your curing salt and it comes with some juniper berries because those are really, really common ingredients in curing, which I thought was really, really awesome. Now the great thing about Umai Dry is that they come with these little vac mouse strips. And what they do is they allow you to create a really good vacuum seal by including them in the section of the bag that you're gonna seal up. They allow you to create a really great seal in the bag when you're withdrawing all of the air out that wouldn't really be possible without using those strips. So they're a really important part of the process and they come with the bags themselves. And you'll see that as I go through this process how I use those strips when sealing these bags up. So today what we're gonna be using is this really simple vacuum sealer. Now these bags, it's important to note, aren't vacuum bags. So you're probably not gonna get the same kind of seal you would get on a normal vacuum bag, but it is important to get at least 80% contact between the bag itself and the meat that we're putting inside of it so that we can get a really good cure on this. I'm gonna go ahead and slide it in, make sure we have some excess room at the end of the bag so that we can seal it properly. And I'm gonna be doing two different seals today. We're gonna be doing this rolled pancetta and we're gonna be using a flat piece of pancetta because I really wanted to see the difference of it here. So for this seal, I'm gonna go ahead and use the mouse strips and just do a straight seal in our vacuum sealer today. I wanna make sure that those mouse strips are put so that they go from end to end to make sure we have a complete seal. It really doesn't have to sort of look pretty on the end. What I'm looking for is consistency from end to end with those mouse strips. Once I've got my first nice seal here from the whole way across the bag, I'm going to go ahead and add a second seal, slightly closer to the meat than the first one. And the purpose of this is just really just to double up, make sure that we've got a good seal the whole way through this process. As I mentioned earlier, we're doing pancetta two ways today. We've got our rolled pancetta, and this is gonna be our flat pancetta. So we're gonna leave it pretty much as is. I've evened it up on the side so that it's sort of nice and straight and looks good. But that's a really nice color, really nice piece of pancetta there today. We're gonna to go ahead and slide this into the smaller artisanal bag here. And we're gonna do the seal on this one a little bit different, which is a really great technique to be using when you've got those larger bags with the larger surface area. Rather than using mouse strips the whole way across, I'm gonna start by putting the mouse strip on one end and doing a diagonal seal on the other end of the bag. So this first seal, it's just gonna be a seal. We're not gonna try and remove any of the air out of the bag. And this is essentially just to close the sort of the surface area, just to make it a nice even seal. So we're gonna go ahead and press that seal down there on the diagonal and we're gonna do that twice again so that we've got a nice seal making sure that even if the first one fails, there's still a nice seal on the bag itself. So now that we have our diagonal seals, what we're gonna do is in the gap that we have that we haven't sealed yet, we're gonna slide our mouse strip in there, and then we're gonna seal that one up using a vacuum seal. What this means is that we've got seals across the whole open end of the bag, but also the mouse strip on that one section that we're closing off last, where we're gonna be doing the vacuum seal. Pretty simple, sometimes it takes a little while for you to make sure that that mouse strip is covering the whole gap, but the principle is really the same. We're gonna push out any of the air inside the bag as we're doing the vacuum seal, just to make sure that we're getting all of the air out that we want out of there, make it a nice, clean, consistent seal in this bag. So now we have pancetta two ways. We've got our rolled pancetta, which is sitting inside of our long, artisan meat bag from Umai Dry, and then we've got our small square pancetta, which we've got in the larger artisan bag from Umai Dry. We're gonna put those in our fridge for two weeks at least, 
really let those flavors soak in, really let that dry aging process begin and really start to form some amazing flavors. And using these Umai dry bags, we're gonna get a really fantastic result because we have that one way air transfer where air can exit the bag, but not enter the bag. So in two weeks, we're gonna go ahead and pull this one out. I will show you exactly what it's gonna look like, exactly how we're gonna use it and the exact recipes that I'm going to be using with that meat once it's finished. So in the meantime, head across to umaidry.com and pick up one of the artisan meat charcuterie kits for yourself. This charcuterie kit comes with your curing salt as well as your juniper berries and the bags that you need. So it's a really great place to start if you want to make some of this charcuterie yourself at home. If you're in Australia, you can also head across to some of the Umai Dry retailers. You can pick up their bags in store at My Slice of Life or pick it up on their website, whichever works best for you. There are a lot of different places that sell similar bags, but in my experience, these Umai Dry bags are one of my favorites just because they come with everything that you need and they're really simple to use. So stay tuned for the last video in the series, which will show the payoff where we can see the results of all the hard work and the awesome food we can make with this pancetta once it's finished.